Okay, so this video is taking a little bit of a step back from what I, basically my ramblings about what is integral, ha, my own thoughts on integral science, and now a little bit more about the people out there, if you want to learn about what they're doing. Um, first guy is, of course, Alan Watts. If you're expecting Ken Wilber, I understand that Ken Wilber even got some of his ideas from this guy right here, Alan Watts. Um, who is Alan Watts? Well, he was a scholar, I guess you could say, a philosopher. Um, his main focus, oh, and an entertainer, as he would call himself, his main focus was studying Eastern philosophy and Western philosophy, studying our culture and their culture, seeing some kind of underlying thoughts and w certain attitudes that we shared as a culture which influenced the way we acted, our religions, our spiritualities, our politics, our view of the world. How did we see the world? How do we see ourselves in the relation to the world? And how does that influence how we behave and react and, and act and create our civilizations? Um, and that in itself is very interesting. It's, it's more, it's trying to see some kind of conclusive nature to things, and he came to a few interesting observations. I recommend reading any of his work, really. Um, this book is great. The book on the taboo against knowing who you are. And I guess you could say he believed in the, in the higher uh, transcendental mystical aspects of any kind of religion, specifically Taoism and Buddhism, which was uh, two of his primary focuses. He sort of saw their tr the truth that they discovered, those contemplative traditions, as being more real for everybody, and as a great means, at least for, for him and the people who enjoyed his work, to sort of see how everything is interconnected. Because if you see the interconnection of, of life and of societies and of attitudes, then you don't necessarily get stuck in one view versus another view, which is very common, unfortunately in our society, you know, not being able to see another perspective, not being able to step out of the self. Because once you can step out of the self, then it's much easier for you to get along with other people. Um, that's just, that's not his overall theory, but definitely one of his influences. Um, another guy would be Ken Wilber. Uh, I don't have a good example for it, but yeah. This is Ken Wilber. Modern theorist Pretty well known. I recommend this book, One Taste. Uh, more of a personal memoir, I guess you could say. Journals. But um, it's a good example of his work. And also, of course, uh, Brief History of Everything. I mentioned that before. Ken Wilber tries to create that map we're talking about. Uh, he tries to create a map of everything, a theory of everything. And he tries to do that, and it, it's it's quite a task. I mean, uh, it, most people think it's unrealistic or it's too simplistic. Um, I am on the fence with his work. Uh, not his, not so much his earlier work, but his his later work, which has just basically agreed that, look, I have this theory, I have this framework, and everything in that framework is directly correlative to aspects of our reality. The interior, the exterior, the whole aqua thing that I was showing before, this thing. Um, he would say, look, this framework is just observing things that are already here. It's what other people have stated, I just put it together in a nifty framework. And it's true. Um, of course, the problem with any kind of framework is that it might box in the reality and make it more congealed in black and white than the way it really is. And I guess that's what comes with the pr uh, that's the price you pay for creating a framework like that um, it's not necessarily negative it can actually be very positive and uh, lead to more work and because of that um, let's see who else because of that I think a lot of people who support integral theory but want to see some greater development with it have sort of come out like I mean, people like me in this video, I'm talking to you about integral theory, but not just, I'm not just giving you a description of uh, Ken Wilber's work. Uh, but I'm going to do that now, because uh, I'll get back to some of my ideas later. 
But uh, let me go through Ken Wilber's work because it is very interesting, and uh, you may you may agree with it, and I, I for the most part do. So last week we were talking about how evolution is sort of exponential; it has a direction, but it's not linear. So it's very complex to map out. In fact, some people argue we'll never really get a no for a long time. I mean, it's, some people argue it's not even answerable to, to, to really create a framework about of which we're all a part of. Um, but since we are exponentially developing over time, evolution is exponential. Evolution becomes com more complex at a faster rate. That's what it means. And um, it uses chaos to grow. Now, that's very interesting because all of a sudden you have a... A uh, synthesis of postmodernism and modernism. I mean, it sounds like it. It's, it's greater than the sum of its parts. It's not the two put together. But the modernists were saying there is a direction, and they're saying it's a linear direction. The postmodernists are saying there is no direction. It's too complex. Well, this theory is saying there is a direction, and it is complex. So it's saying both. Both are right, um, but needs some other framework for this. Needs something other under uh, some kind of deeper, more holistic and conclusive understanding of reality. And um, that, for Wilbur, was the holarchy. Now, what a holarchy is, um, it's basically saying that, look, there are structures of organization in the universe, and there are higher and lower structures, and all that means, which uh, is not greater or lesser or oh, this, this structure is worse, this is all at the bottom, uh, it's less worthy. It doesn't mean that. It just means there are higher and lower structures of organization. The more complex organization becomes, um, the, high, the, more high, the higher it is on the, the hierarchy, or the, the, the ladder of uh, structuralization spectrum, I guess you could say. So, so like higher and then lower, or whatever. I don't know, something to that degree. Um, and this makes sense because there are things are organized in greater and lesser forms, and everything. This is the second part. Everything is a whole part, or a holon, and a holon is basically um, something that makes up something else. A planet is made up of elements. It's a whole and it's a part. Elements are made up of molecules and atoms, and molecules and atoms are made up of quarks and protons and electrons and all that, and those are made up of, well, you know, quarks are made to make electrons and whatnot. But you get the picture. So it's a general build-up. And then planets make up solar systems. Solar systems make up galaxies. Galaxies make up galaxy clusters. Galaxy clusters make up giant arches and structures that look like neurons, like I showed in the last video. So there are general structures to reality, and there are higher and lower forms, and there are different ways to looking at each one. Um, but there's a general tendency for these structures to become more complex over time. Uh, one of those galaxy crust clusters, which millions and millions of galaxies are a part of, is vastly more complex than one solar system within that. Um, yet, so we have the ability to see a bigger picture and include all of the parts it's made up out of. So, and that's the important thing, because you need to reconcile diversity with generalities. So if you want to be general, you have to also include the specifics. So a whole and a part. That's what everything's made of. I am a part of something, and I, I, am, I am me, but I'm also made up of atoms and, and molecules and cells. So that's one of Wilbur's tenets, holons. Holons exist, and there's a hierarchy or a spectrum of lower, lesser complex, and more complex. And over time, for some reason, um, at least on Earth, this um, universe evolves to become more complex. So life has become more complex over time, and for some reason it's become complex enough to create human life, to create consciousness and awareness. And to him, this is basically evidence that there's some kind of greater something going on. Um, some kind of greater framework, and if we could just start to see it, we can start to kind of use it to see where we're going, who we are. And to Ken Wilber, spirituality is um, part of the whole spectrum, but specifically spirituality is part of the higher forms, the mystical sages and the saints, they're, they're up there. And I'll continue in the next video.